This is a video that's going to go over the different types of ammunition for each of the weapons that we have. It's not going to be each weapon itself, it's going to be each style of weapon. So, like assault rifle and shotgun versus like grenade arrows and storm arrows and flame arrows and poison arrows and shell breaker arrows and not specifically like what weapon they're from, just the, the alternate ammunition type, as well as how to make them or find them in the wild as and what they do so check the description for timestamps because it's going to be cut up into each different section and i'm going to use each type of weapon in an encounter so there'll be bits and chunks and stuff like that so check the description for which part you want and there you go Okay, the shotgun has normal ammo, which is the red, and then it also has storm ammo, which is the blue. There is nowhere, really, in the game <laughs> that tells you that. In the journal, the ammunition designs are all specific to arrows. So we just have to sort of get that from looting and them telling us that the blue ones are storm ammo. So I have left one AMP alive and we're just going to demonstrate what the storm ammo is. But basically it's the same thing as the lightning arrows, the storm bow lightning arrows, is it's going to electrocute it and give you a chance to do like a follow-up. I think I missed the first one. It'll also do its own damage too. So if you have a shotgun that's high enough, you can kill it. Um, but that is not considered a silent kill, so I wouldn't use them for stealth. And each installation, that's food, I think that one's food, has a green box, which is the special ammunition container. And that will give you that will replace your storm shells. Okay, this is the assault rifle. I have left one AMP alive, and the assault rifle has stagger rounds. They have the normal rounds, and then they have stagger rounds. Now that's about as much as I know, because I don't use the assault rifle on enemies. I tend to use it when you have to shoot things. So I've never really used the stagger round, so we're going to learn together. I'm assuming it's similar to the storm stuff. Or not. I not seem to stagger it much at all. <laughs> Okay, I'm not sure the benefit of the stagger rounds. <laughs> Quite honestly, I would use like eight other things before I use these. But I don't know, maybe I'm not using them in the right way. I, I don't know. I don't know what else to use it on. Maybe on humans. All right, you know what? Let's try it on humans and see what happens. Let me leave a human alive and we'll see if it does a better job. Maybe they're not meant for AMPs. Okay, let's test the stagger ammo from the assault rifle on a human and see if it does anything better than it did on the AMP. You will wait. It's not like the next Okay, I'm not sure what this ammo is supposed to do. <laughs> I don't know. It doesn't seem to do anything different than just regular ammunition. So if anybody knows what the stagger ammo does, uh, let me know in comment. Because it doesn't seem to do much of anything on either AMP or standard human. So, and then again, where am I? You're going to want to look for the green boxes. Ooh. They hold the special 
ammunition refills. And then this right here, this holds your regular ammunition. This, these containers, these cabinets, can also be found in every field lab. So if you use regular shotgun or regular assault rifle, you can refill them with this. The special ammunition gets refilled by the green box, which I don't even know where it is in this one. It's around here somewhere. Oh, here. So that'll refill your stagger round. Okay, next we're going to go over arrow types. In your journal, under designs, you have an ammo section. And as you can see, ammunition is made up of one to three different things. And they're all like one of four. It's either sticks, spare parts, sulfur pods, or acrid pods. That, in some form or another are all you use to make all of the different types of ammunition alternate arrows in the game. So the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to show you where to get sulfur pods and acrid pods in different locations in each of the three regions. And it's also sort of, it's not like a you have to absolutely go here type thing. It's a look for this type thing. But we'll go ahead and we will do that next okay my favorite place to get sulfur pods in kingler forest is in the rising spires great roots biome they are on these trees with of course I'm always like a ton it's the tree with the ton of mushrooms it's a stairfoot tree and you can often find any there's usually four spots not all of them are always gatherable though oftentimes they fake you out with like an empty one or one that you can't like actually interact with but often you can get four and it's a really good place to get four but in here these kinds of trees are very common in the great roots and it's an easy place to farm them and you can carry up to 20. I'm not going to do any more. I just saw a tree over here. I was going to show you like more. There, here they are. I just wasn't over far enough like to get a whole bunch of that. So. And we're going to have to go soon because severed are around, of course. It's this tree right here. This tree. Alright, time to go. <laughs> In the upper plains, you can get uh, sulfur pods off of wind bent trees. They're usually right at one of the curves on the right. The trouble with this area is you only get two usually per tree instead of four and since it's in the wild purple stuff biome you have to deal quite often with severed so i usually go and get them back in kingler forest when i was in upper plains it's, i wouldn't even get them from here like i can't i can't, I can't deal with the severed but you can get them off wind bent trees in upper plains Okay, now in Clouded Forest, the place to find sulfur pods are on frill stem, frill stem trees. They look like a variation of the uh, stair, stair foot tree. And this has usually three. Finally full. And you can carry up to 20. And you can see them... See how many you have if you highlight a weapon that has an alternate ammunition style that uses them in crafting. So you can see I have 15 piles of sticks or whatever, 20 sulfur pods, and more than 99 
spare parts. You may or may not also be able to see them. No, okay. I thought you'd be able to see them because you can see spare parts here and duty rosters and then the beads. I thought you might be able to see them in here, but you can't. So I only see them on here. So there you can see sticks, spare parts, and sulfur pots. So then if I wanted to craft one on PlayStation, you just use the right D-pad to switch back and forth. And then you just craft. Now, acrid pods are found on rocks inside of, like, the rivers and stuff. They're these yellow, yellow flower things. There isn't any one place to go like there is with the sulfur pods and the style of trees. You can literally go to any of the waterways and find, like, a whole bunch. There are a ton here over in the falls area. Like, if you really want to stack up, there's a ton of, like, little bitty rocks that are usually right around here. So in streams that have just, like, a ton of rocks... Oh, my pouch is full. But, like, there's two. There's a couple. There's one. They're all along where there's rocks in the river. And this is over under weeping steps. Like this area is loaded over here. So anywhere there's water, you can find them. Okay, so I've left one AMP alive. And I'm going to use a longbow that has... the lightning arrows attached to it. Where are we? Storm arrows. I call them lightning arrows. The bow is often called a lightning bow, but the arrows themselves are storm arrows. So what they're going to do, it has fitted with high voltage coils that temporarily paralyze their targets. I use storm arrows consistently before I started to become a lot more comfortable hitting the weak points in the back with a heavy bow. Until then, <clears throat> more often than not, I screwed it up or I missed or whatever. If you use a storm arrow, you one, you do damage all on your own, all on its own, but it freezes them and allows you to get just then like a normal body shot in case you miss the weak point. So it gives you a little bit of grace period. So I really like the Storm Arrows, and I was a heavy Storm Arrow user uh, early in mid-game for me. And they come on the Lightning Bow. So at this point, I'll probably just end up killing him. But see how it freezes him? He'll actually, like, jerk around for quite a bit before, and then you're like, hey, now I have some time. And then you can just get off like a regular standard body shot and you don't have to worry about whether or not you hit the weak points or not. So that's why I like the storm arrows quite a bit. And I was a heavy storm user. If you've watched any of my stealth videos from Kingler Forest or Upper Plains, most of them contain a storm arrow usage. The grenade arrow is found on some of the earliest weapons. It's actually found on the longbow that uh, Solik teaches you how to make. The grenade arrow is really good early alternate arrow. It is not stealthy at all, but it can do a significant amount of damage to an AMP. If you're close enough and you hit a weak spot, you can kill it. More likely or not, you'll get about 85 to 90% of its health off, at least in Kingler Forest. As you move up, uh, your bow has to move up as well. 
obviously for damage amounts or it no longer does as much damage in upper planes but I sort of stopped using it so this is the one I have so I don't expect it to kill him but we're gonna try and wait for like a vague I did expect it to do a little more damage than that. <laughs> Usually I've had it do between 80 and 90% damage. But usually it's like a firecracker situation. And as long as the grenade lands on it and it doesn't dance away, you should be able to do a decent amount of damage with the grenade arrow. So I found a heavy bow that had uh, grenade arrows on it, so the damage is a lot higher. So I'm also in Clouded Forest. See, it really just has to do uh, with the damage of the weapon also like where you are. So just because it didn't work 100% on the earlier example, that was just because the bow had was lower damage level. 81 versus, oh, not that one. But anyway, so that's the grenade arrow. Not a stealth kill, but also very, very useful. Okay, it's a little foggy, but we're gonna do a flame arrow. example now I did not start using these really until I crafted the black wind heavy bow but I'm kind of wishing I had started using them earlier uh, they are damage over time and they do count as stealth as long as no one sees I don't know if you need that one skill the warrior the silent destroyer I don't know if it's that, if it needs that or not, I'm not sure. But it doesn't often do like a hundred percent unless you've come across like, actually let me cancel shot. Cause this is level 16. And so it will do, if your bow has high enough damage on it versus the AMP that you're looking at, you can get a one shot kill off of this type of arrow. Other than that, it, I've had them also do like 60, 70, 80% damage. So whatever you choose to do, if you choose to use this arrow, I would have a either a follow-up ready to go, either a second flame arrow, or just a second regular arrow, just sort of finish them off. But it can be considered one of the stealth kills, and it's one I really like. Okay, poison arrows. Poison arrows are made with acrid pods. And one of the best situations for poison arrows that I've come across are when you have two non AMP enemies that are wildly codependent on each other and will not leave each other's sights or close enough that their paths cross. That's when poison arrows shine. Because you can shoot one and the cloud disperse will kill the other. So these are the situations where even with the short bow, it's hard to get off two quick shots before the second one notices. This is where uh, poison arrows are gonna work really well. So these two are vaguely close together. And I shot it in the ground. It took out both. And I stayed stealthy because there's still two more humans. <clears throat> Excuse me, two more humans and an AMP. Now, this will do 
nothing for the AMP. They are protected in their shell thing, so this is nothing that can really get used on them. But for your codependent, non-AMP people, that's where poisoned arrows work really, really well. Okay, shell breaker arrows. I admit I do not have a lot of experience with shell breaker arrows. Um, they're meant to pierce the thickest hide, so I'm assuming that they're used on uh, wildlife that have heavy hides. Um, I usually had a heavy bow that I used instead, so I didn't really give these a lot of experience, a lot of work. Um, I, I didn't really use them a whole lot. But this is a hammerhead, which has heavy hide. And so we're going to try it. This is not the best weapon. It's like the only one that I happen to have. It's only got a damage of 132. But we're in Kingler Forest, so I'm going to kind of hope that it's enough. And then, like, run for your life because they're going to try and mow you down because you just killed their family member. over killing these things. Oh. Thank you for these, these gifts. gifts. So there is the shell breaker. Now the staff sling is one of my favorites. There are three types of ammo for this. On the left, it's trip grenades. In the middle, it's siren pods. And on the right are skunk palm pods. Trip grenades are the same as proximity mines. Excuse me. Now there is no sticky on them. So if you fling them at an AMP, they have to be standing still or else they're just going to do that annoying dance away thing and it won't do anything. So you need to make sure that they're either standing still if you're going after like an active one that's trying to kill you or just put it like in their path or something like that. The siren pods are on par with throwing a rock or whistling or something like that. It's something to peel an enemy away from the group and sort of create a, str a straggler. And then you can take them out. And then the skunk palm is the exact opposite. When you're in situations where you want to either split people up or move them away from where they're moving, you would use a skunk palm. And I have left two singles and an AMP alive to sort of like play with us. So now these two will sort of cross paths. So left is trip, middle is siren, right so is the skunk pod. So we're gonna just, like make sure that they sort of separate. And you can't see it very well, but there's like a bullseye thing down here. That tells you where it's gonna go. So you're like, hey, I don't want you here. And you can see if you see in the bottom right, I'm swapping out ammo types right now through D-pad. So that has not alerted them, but it has sort of alerted them. But it hasn't alerted them. But it split them up a little. And then what we can do. I do. If they're close enough. No sign of any threat so far. What a pain in the ass noise! Yeah, what a pain in the ass noise. Come on, where is it? Oh, God, I missed the second he turned around. Okay, so this is where the trap mine part comes into play. Oh, and sometimes you 
conference, bro. Ah. Oh, he got hit by the other one. Perfect. <laughs> so that is what the staff sling does. And then you can pick up the trip mines if they don't go off. The siren pods and the skunk pods go off on... They detonate on landing, so you can't pick those up. But the trip grenades, if they don't detonate, can be picked up again. So don't always craft to the full extent, maybe, if if you have a lot laying around, because you can pick them up later. So that's a general overview of all of the ammo types that at least I've come in contact with. Uh, if I missed one, let me know. And if I missed saying anything, check the description because I probably would have remembered and written it there. Or maybe I didn't. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. All right, thanks.